What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and uh, my buddy called me and said hey is that go-kart going to be done by Christmas? And I was like hmm I guess I was supposed to have a go-kart done by Christmas. I had forgotten that we had talked about this uh, go-kart he brought me. This is a little Chinese, uh, had a little two-stroke weed eater style engine on its stock. This is a full suspension little buggy that he was wanting to give his son for Christmas. Now it didn't have to be painted or anything because you boy don't paint anything. If it ain't getting powder coated, it ain't getting painted. Uh, so what we have to do is it is currently December 20th. We have five days till Christmas, which is plenty of time to do this, but uh, kind of threw my schedule off a little bit. But we have to take this swing arm. We've got to modify it with a Go Power Sports one inch axle. So that means replacing the axle bearings, putting a Go Power Sports engine plate on it, and getting this swapped out to a Predator 212. He went with the Hemi Predator 212 from Harbor Freight. So we gotta do that, get this thing buttoned up so it can be driven. And this is a, I mean, this is a tiny little full suspension go-kart. Really cool and unique little frame. And then uh, we gotta build a row cage that's unboldable. The reason he wants it unboldable, to use these original stubs, is so he can sit on the chassis right here while he gets his son used to it and then he can bolt the cage back on. So we're gonna pull this swing arm off and start modifying it first, get it thrown back on with the engine. And uh, then we can go on to probably, I don't know if we're gonna use the original brake uh, caliper. We might switch it over to hydraulic and stuff. Um, yeah, let's knock this out. We got basically five days to get it to him. So let's see how quick we can get this done. So these chassis aren't made out of thick steel like this is one finger. Show you how loud it is, one pinky finger. So I did think about cutting these off or even using heim joints and rebuilding this real quick because it's not much to rebuild. I don't know. It's just so thin of steel. I mean, it's not like, I don't know. So I'm trying to de decide whether I want to do that. I'm gonna have to cut this bar out here and weld one in right well here. it'll be faster just to make your own instead of cutting all this stuff on it uh yeah i mean this is just two bins and then you're talking about a couple of notchy boys yeah um, all right so I've, I've come to determine that this swing arm is just way too thin of material so we're going to replace each of these bushings with heim joints just because the time it would take me to cut this bushing housing off press the bushing out so i can re-weld it to the new swing arm it's just not worth it. Uh, and I'm not gonna worry about cutting these off. We have some tabs that are laser cut, so they're super clean. We'll just weld these onto our new swing arm. You know, we'll have even beefier tabs just because why not make it as high quality as you can for the same amount of time as it would take to make it out of thin stuff. And you're putting your name on it. Yeah, so how to replicate this is first you need to bend a 90 in whatever bender you have and make sure it's a true 90. This is only about a half a degree to one degree off so this is about as true as you're going to get um, then this is the line on my die to where the bend starts so we're going to lay that on there and eyeball it as much as possible with this and we're going to trace that line onto here then we're going to flip this and do the same thing and that's going to tell us the distance between each bend to create this u again so now we have this piece of tube that miss redbeard just cleaned up this is one inch 14 gauge. I would normally build this out of 11 gauge, but I don't have any five days before Christmas and I'm not go buying, I'm not gonna go buy any. So this is plenty strong. I mean, this is still thicker than this. So we're gonna measure out, find out how long our overall piece is. Uh, so we're gonna mark three foot. All right, now that we have our center of our tube marked out, now we can measure out what the distance between these two lines because that's where each bend needs to start. So if we lay our start, that is 12 and three grapes, 12 and three eighths. So we need to take 12 and three eighths and split the difference on each side of this line. So divide 12 and three eighths in half, that would be what, six and, that'd be six and three sixteenths. There you go, six and three sixteenths. I'm minusing one, just, you know, Three sixteenths. 
so our bend needs to happen here our bend needs to happen in this area I always put X's because it helps me to keep up with it because you can and you can see this is welded seam tube there's the welded seam so this tubing is welded together so there is a seam on the inside so we're going to make sure that this seam in our bender is up because it is the weakest point of the tube and if we was to bend with it on the inside of the bend like right here it's more likely to split i've never had one split but it can happen so now our bends are going to start there so all we do is take this piece of tubing over to our bender i'm setting my bender back home now i know we have this glorious piece of machinery but this is no different for whatever bender you have so our bend is going to happen on this side because our die is going to rotate this way so that means this is my one line this is my other let's we'll set this here because that's going to make the bend happen on this side of the tube that's exactly how we want it again just because we have this big fancy bender don't mean this process is any different for you at home even if you have a harbor freight style bender it's all the same process it's just your bender is going to work a little different than my bender so since we already found out our spring back is seven degrees so we add seven degrees to our bend again this is real fancy pants but your bender you would just manually add whatever your spring back is we're not going to go in depth about that but our spring back is seven inch to equal 90. we already got this set on 90 degree so we're just going to put the hammer down i'll loosen this a little I'm going to pop this out. Now we can set our bender back to the home position. So now, I'm going to lay our piece of tube back in here. Put a clamp on there. my particular die and bender it wants you to lubricate this area here because this is a wear item it's made to wear so it's a replaceable part so we're going to get this dead level get that tightened up Now let's go check how accurate we was. So there we go. You can see with a little bit of tweaking out right here, this is gonna be dead the same U. So now what we have to do is figure out from the back of this to this where we need to cut this tube off. So how I do that is get to a flat surface. Luckily we have a Sigmund weld table which is 100% flat. I'm gonna stand it up just like this. I'm gonna measure to the very bottom. If you wanted to extend your swing arm, this would be the time to do it. You could add some inches to it. But I'm just gonna measure to right here. We're gonna copycat what originally was there. Uh, after, actually first I'm gonna test fit and make sure we have enough room. We may have to extend this just a hair bit for our new CVT and engine. Uh, but now we can cut the, once we get this measurement, mark it on here, cut these off. Then we can find out what this piece needs notched at, lay it in there, notch it in and then start adding our hind joints. You'll see the whole process. But pretty easy to make a swing arm uh, with any type of bender. As long as you got a bender or a square tubing, you'd be 45 degree cutting it. It's uh, no problem. Don't, don't overthink it. It's uh, simpler than you think. So normally we would be using a Tilson, but the customer, again, five days before Christmas, we don't have no time to wait. So he went to Harbor Freight, got him a Predator, so now we can test fit, go ahead and mock up the CVT on this engine and make sure we're gonna have enough room for our chain tensioner and for our CVT drop because our CVT does have a little bit of hang down in it. Hey, Mr. You're really strong. 
So we're going to mock up this CVT on here. This is a 30 series from your boys at GPS at Go Power Sports. Sometimes you run into where this oil fill right here, can you see that is hitting this mm -hmm. lower brace. So we're going to have to take out, we're going to have to basically trim this plug. and checking to make sure it's tight. This is just an old engine plate I have for testing engines. So so it does look like we're gonna be okay. We're gonna go ahead and add uh, two and a half, three inches to the length just to be on the safe side and that will kick its wheelbase out a little bit that also make the go-kart a little bit more stable. So whatever this measurement is from the bottom of this to the top bottom of that bushing, we're going to add, let's say three inches to that, which is about that. Let's test my mm. three inches. Uh, that's just going to give us just a little bit more tension of our engine because of this drop down. And we may even use Go Power Sports engine risers, which is square tubing with some holes drilled in it. You put it under your engine, raise it up one inch just to give you that much more adjustment and room. So you can find links to all of our parts, like these heim joints. I don't want to knock this in because I got to clean it out, but this pops right in there. But the links for these heim joints are linked down below. These are completely overkill. These are chrome alley heim joints that we would normally use on our A-arms. But we're going to use uh, the best parts because this isn't much money to know this is never going to wear out on the back of that go-kart. This will last them a lifetime. So we're going to clean this up so I can TIG weld these on. And we're also going to do a rosette weld by drilling a quarter inch hole through this tubing. Now give us a, a plug weld, rosette weld, whatever you want to call it. And then we next we can get our tubing notched to fit in between here. Then we can clamp this down, slide that tube in. We can TIG weld this uh, in, and then all we have left is our two cross braces. Then we can get this engine plate mounted on. So at Fab Tech a couple years ago, we was at the Op Trail booth and they make the best welding hoods in the game. And I had never heard of them until going up to their booth and they had someone welding and you could use one of their hoods. Look at the, the head gear on that thing. It's just like, it feels like the hand of Jesus is holding your scalp and it's so freaking comfortable. And then when you let the hood down, it has an indention for your nose and it's super smooth. It's just so comfortable. Um, so we reached out and wanted to get one to use on the channel and show you guys these things are insanely high quality They're made in Switzerland So they are a Swiss product and This is the first time we've ever I'm only gonna use this for TIG welding because it's the only one I got and I don't want to scratch it up I highly recommend if you're ever near a booth to check these out even if you're not interested in welding because They'll blow your mind compared to a standard hood. So this is the first time we're going to be using it in our actual shop it's so clear, it's insane. And I don't want to get spatter on it, so I'm only going to use it for TIG welding. Comes with an extra lens, and this lens also is O-ringed all the way around it. So it's super sealed to make sure you protect your lens inside there. So this protection lens is crazy high quality as well. Really impressive. Off Trail is the name in the game. We are pumped to be using this on our channel has a USB recharger. That's also a big thing. Not only will it charge itself, but you can charge it off USB. So that's huge. It has a really nice carrying case, so you won't scratch it up. This is probably gonna be the most protected piece of equipment in our shop, because I love it. It's gonna be a game changer.
I'm gonna drill some quarter inch holes in this swing arm. We have this fully welded. The plate is not welded and we have not welded these bungs in. And I have, you see that line right there. That is basically if my hind joint is fully tight with the jam nut, that is in line uh, because we don't really need to adjust anything on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill my holes real quick to do my, my plug welds. Once I get these TIG welded in, then I need to measure measure from center of my hime joint when it's in there, eight inches back and eight inches is where the center of these holes on this tab need to be. So uh, that'll be the stock location to give us the stock spring rate. And then 10 and a half inches from the center of this hime joint back is where our center of our axle hanger needs to be. So it looks like with my engine right here that's going to be the perfect location uh, to weld this plate so we also can make sure this plate square tack it into place go ahead and tig these and the plate we'll tack the plate to make sure we've made these mistakes before trust us um, these will be one of the last things we do because we don't necessarily need them right now this will be like the last thing we add to it i should put a little trailer hitch on here shouldn't i <laughs> that'd be uh, so cute so we're gonna get this done and then the last thing that'll be done after these will be a uh, brake. We gotta mount the whatever brake copper I end up going with. So I've never really used these centurial tools for this exact thing. Yeah. I'm usually using them for tubing. But this is going to work real nice. This red beard. I was sitting here trying to hold it in place. And this red beard was like, won't those magnetic holders work? Man, that is living. Is it lined up? Yep. That's freaking nice. It's not. This side needs to be more pushed down. Yep. Now it needs to come back just a teensy bit yep right there get this tack and it down
So guys, thank you for watching today's video. Uh, we appreciate your love and support so much. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and comment down below if, uh, if you have any questions on how we do these swing arms. I hope this helps somebody with their project because uh, this is uh, what I see a lot of the times people is taking a 150 go-kart or something similar and trying to build their own swing arm to adapt it to a Predator. Uh, so I hope this answered some questions. We did this a ton on our channel, but we always like to do a refresher video every once in a while just to remind you guys that uh, this stuff is easier than it looks. I know we have a bunch of crazy tools in this shop um, but we built this garage while you guys watched us as we learned in the process so any of this is achievable because we had never welded before uh, six years ago so uh, you can do it if you just put your mind to it and just focus on what you're doing think things through and don't get uh, frustrated because it's easy to get your mind off when you get frustrated at stuff so uh, make sure to like the video comment and make sure to check out the links in the video's description on every part we used in today's video those heim joints the helmet the go power sports parts we couldn't do these videos without all of our awesome sponsors and go power sports has been one since day one so we really appreciate the love and support we get from go power sports and we hope you guys will let them know that redbeard sent you when you buy parts from them that does help us to continue to do videos hope everybody had a great christmas we are still finishing up the 25 days of christmas giveaways it gets a little bit hectic right around christmas because of family stuff so make sure to comment on this video and you could be one of the final winners of the 25 days of christmas everybody that's entered we are shipping out your stuff uh so look for it in the mail it is christmas time so stuff is a uh, you know pretty frantic with the shipping services so thank you guys for the love and support all through this year next year is going to be the biggest year we've ever had uh, we got some amazing things planned and we can't wait to take you guys along for the ride and uh, see where we can grow this channel. We thank you guys so much for all your love and support. We thank all of our sponsors, and we love you guys, and God bless.